I really do think this is a commentary on the world. I really do think this is a commentary on a lot of countries and uh, the armies of different countries and how the governments treat their armies. You have the Republic who you could say are fascists and don't support their military at all. Um, they just kind of throw their, throw their soldiers at the problem and you know don't care if they die, don't even record their deaths or anything like that. Only care about their own people, their pure-blooded people. The Federacy is a more nefarious evil, one that gives off the impression that we care about our military and we care about the 86, but at the end of the day, they'll throw them at the problem just like the Republic did. Yo, what's going on guys? So this is going to be 86 episode... I always forget the episode number, so... Okay, 17. <laughs> dude, last week we saw Shin's bloodlust. The dude is a maniac uh, on the sticks. In the middle of the war, this guy's fighting, and he just starts smiling like a freaking psychopath. So it just goes to show how broken this guy is, and it really does make you lose a little bit of hope for if he's going to have some sort of redemption as far as his freedom. And I'm not, I'm not sure, because this anime... This anime has shown time and time again that they will give you tragedy when you least expect it. We also got Lena last episode. We finally got her POV and it does seem like we're going to be sticking with her this episode. Even though the after credits scene last episode made it seem as if Kyria attacked them somehow. Uh, we were left off a of brutal cliffhanger but... The way that the episode was set up, I don't think we're going to go back there. So we won't know what happened um, in this episode, I think. Or we might, but I, I severely doubt it. Lena, on the other hand, has taken uh, the initiative to gather all the 86 processors currently and fight against the Legion who are so close to taking over the Republic and you know, coming onto their territory. And it's an all-out war. Now, one thing I'll say is that as far as the Legion goes, being the villain of the story, uh, I'm a little bit detached from them. And I know the Legion aren't the main villain of the story or the only villain, uh, the people of the Republic or anyone who, you know, chooses to oppress and, you know, sow hatred against the 86 are also villains. But just the Legion just seemed like that force that just never ends. And I don't know. I just feel very detached from them. It's kind of similar to how I felt about the zombies and the Night King and all of them. I was very detached from them and um, I didn't think they were the best villain for the story. And in that show too, there were other more important villains, but similar feelings there to uh, this show. But yeah, that's enough for that. So let's get right into it. Sheesh. Oh my god, have they they're on the Republic now? Bro. I'm sorry, what? Bro, what? They're literally right there. How did this happen? Oh, never mind. We actually went back to their um POV. I was not expecting that. Holy shit, dude, they got blasted away. Bro, you, bro, you see these dead bodies everywhere? What the fuck? Did he just like shoot them from very far away? 20,000? Yo, what is going on? There's a new legion? Oh my god, dude, it's like a tank. A rail, oh, come on. A railgun? Yo, it's GG's, bro. So, so this, so this fucking Morpho thing can take out cities and capitals from hundreds of miles away. How many miles is a, uh, how many miles is 400 kilometers? Cause I'm, I'm a, I'm sorry. I'm not a metric system boy. 250 miles, pretty much. That's far as shit, dude. I got, I got to do some math real quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you're getting shot from 400 kilometers away and it travels at 8,000, what was it, 8,000 meters per second? So then it would take about, uh, 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 
So 400 divided by 8. Bro, it would take 50 fucking seconds for that shit to go 250 miles. What the fuck? They lost 26% of their whole forces in one attack, bro. What is going on right now? Oh my god, least likely to be missed. You mean the 86, you fucking assholes? Yo, these guys are no better. These guys are no better than the Republic. And that's what's being revealed now. Even if they support 86, they don't see... They don't see them as part of their community and society anymore. The Fezzer isn't like their... Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. They're not replaceable. Dude, fuck the Federacy. Bro, look at these fucking military assholes, bro. This anime gives me so much anxiety and stress. That's the blast? Dude, that literally does look like 25% of the place just got blown up. Oh my god, all the food's gone too. Oh no. What are those bananas? Dried bananas and kiwis and mushroom soup and potatoes? Holy shit, what a terrible fucking dinner. Yo, why did you kill my brother giving back? Nina Rants. Nina Rants. Oh, the brother was uh, Eugene, right? Oh my god, he's smiling. Ugh. Oh my god. Oh, dude. He's broken, dude. His brain is done. He's taking on all the and those blood that blood is supposed to be emulating his tears He's, he has tears of blood oh god dude holy yeah they gotta chill the fuck out with the fucking jump scares dude especially with headphones on fuck her criticism is valid i mean she's a fucking kid dude her missus her dead brother i mean you know you can't really blame her for saying that to you but also, that's not just an isolated case. He's had so many people say that. Why did you live and all that? And he doesn't really understand it himself why he has to live. And it's kind of torture for him to have to see people die. I mean, this has been established before. The fact that he's the only one that ever survives at the end of, you know, the missions for all the 86 groups that he's been a part of. This is a suicide mission. The higher ups... Oh my fucking god. Literally said the same shit that the Republic said. I fucking hate this military. Bro, this is so sad, dude. He hears the voices of the Legion, but now he's hearing the voices of his dead allies and his friends. These are people from Shin's history. Just remnants of his past. I literally have goosebumps and chills right now. This show is... This show is something else. Oh my god, dude. Fuck. I'm left behind always. Yes! That's exactly what I was saying. He was always left behind. To stay alive. The fetters he saved you from the battlefield. Man, shut the... Oh my god, man, why is he making it seem like he's doing this of his own volition when they were going to use him regardless, even if they decided to probably, like, not, uh, you know, fight in the war and continue to just be soldiers? They probably would have found some excuse to use the 86 anyway, because they see him as disposable, they see him as people who are less likely to be remembered. This is fucking stupid. You want us to cease being who we are for the sake of your pity and your sense of justice? No, she just wants you to fucking live, dog. I refuse to be like the Republic and turn my Bro, you would not be like the Republic if you stopped trying to fight. You would just be... You'd be retired. <laughs> You've already put in enough work against your own will. If you're a match for a monster, that means you're a monster yourself. Dude, he's... Uh, Oh my god, I hate these people! Oh no! I hate the Federacy now.
it took one episode. I was sus of them. I didn't really like them like that, but now I just straight up hate them. And I hate them just as much as Republic. Because they had a chance. They might even be worse than Republic. Because Republic is just pure evil. These guys like put on an air of like being nice and you know uh, accommodating to the 86 and acting like they care about their lives, but they really don't. And that's like I feel like much worse. What is this fucking show, dude? All right, that was uh, episode 17. Oh my god, this episode broke me. I thought last episode broke me, but this one is just on a whole different level. The Federacy is officially as bad, if not worse, than the Republic. The Republic are just assholes who are evil, and you know, that's bad, that's terrible, but... The Federacy put on an air, a, uh, they gave the impression that they cared about the 86, or at least the leaders of the Federacy did, and it turns out that they really did it. They were just, you know, being accommodating, and they wanted to eventually use them as soldiers just like the fucking Federacy. Don't get me wrong, there are some people in the military who do care, like their squad leader and that guy, that old guy at the end, but overall, the Federacy is just like the Republic. And it just goes to show you that, and I think this is what the show is trying to sh tell us, is that governments, authoritarian governments, they do not care about their people, they do not care about their soldiers, and the Republican Federacy are two examples of that. I really do think this is a commentary on the world. I really do think this is a commentary on a lot of countries and uh, the armies of different countries and how the governments treat their armies. You have the Republic who you could say are fascists and don't support their military at all. Um, they just kind of throw their, throw their soldiers at the problem and you know don't care if they die don't even record their deaths or anything like that only care about their own people their pure-blooded people and the federacy is a more nefarious evil one that gives off the impression that we care about our military and we care about the 86 but at the end of the day they'll throw them at the problem just like the republic did you can see that, and you can see that in real life with a lot of countries today. So I'm not gonna get too much into that. So we actually didn't get Lena this episode. They kind of tricked us. I thought we were gonna stay on Lena's point of view, but we came back to Shin and wow, Morpho, whatever this tank thing is, we haven't really seen it in person yet, but whatever it is, it's fucking fast. It was able to shoot them from miles away within seconds completely obliterating 25% of their force and the only way that they decide to deal with it is sending in ground troops and who better else than the 86 right of course it's always the 86 this episode just really dove into how broken Shin's mind really is from just hearing the same things from the Federacy leaders that he did from the Republic leaders how you're just 86 and we're just gonna use you to hearing the voices of his dead allies from the past, Shin has completely broken down. He is honest with himself that this is just my life. This is just how it ends and there's nothing I can do to redeem it. There's nothing, there's nothing more for me besides war. There's nothing more for me besides fighting and violence. And that's where his bloodlust comes from. That's where all the smiles come from. They're not smiles because he's you know, evil or anything like that. Their smiles, because that's the only way he knows how to deal with this trauma. You know, some people cry when they're sad or they go through trauma, but Shin on the other hand smiles, which is a, actually a very common response that a lot of people have. Sometimes you don't know how to feel. You don't know how to cry. The tears just don't come out. Sometimes you end up smiling and laughing even. It's a smile. It's just a cry out for desperation. In Shin's case, when he does cry in this episode, it's symbolically tears of blood dripping down his cheek and just, I just can't see anything good happening going into this mission. Um, they said numerous times during this episode it's a suicide mission and I believe him. Oh, even seeing Eugene's sister blame him or accuse him of killing his brother. It just really made him reflect on how he's always left behind to stay alive while everyone else dies around him. He just feels immortal in a sense, but with immortality, uh, of this kind at least, comes grief, comes just disillusionment with life, and Shin just wants it to end. You know, the leaders of the Federacy say over and over, if these guys are attracted to death, why not give it to them? But that's not only how they feel, that's how the 86 feel too. They just, they, 
they're attracted to death they're, they're because they were made to be that way they were made they were forced into a situation and they're just when you subjugate a people a group of people for so long you gaslight them into thinking that this is the only way they can survive this is the only purpose they have and i feel like that's one of the most realistic parts of this show governments just manufacture consent from its people and convince them that the actions that they're taking are proper and just all for the good of the people and the betterment of society or some bullshit like that but a1 pictures has created a show that i'm going to remember for a long time i haven't watched a lot of mech anime but this is definitely in my top three mech anime of all time easily come on man like you can't watch this show with a serious mind and not feel what they're what the show is trying to make you feel oh man the 86 are going on a suicide mission it seems like an actual suicide mission to top off the season and it seems like shin has also said his goodbyes to everyone um he said his goodbyes to lena mentally he said his goodbyes to his dead friends and he's even said his goodbyes to himself now so i'll leave it at that let me know what you guys thought about this episode down in the comments um drop a like if you guys enjoyed the video hit that subscribe you can help me out a lot i just realized i'm still recording and there's so many thoughts just still like going through my head but yeah i'm gonna end it on there though you guys take care